Well, welcome to Coffee with Job. It is now Christmas Eve. Well, again, not if you're in, if you're behind the times in the UK and the US, but we're coming towards Christmas Eve. And I'm going to read a passage um, that doesn't appear immediately very Christmassy. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering what this is, uh, I've not turned Catholic and suddenly burning incense. This is... I, I call it our midgy smoke, but it's to keep the, the mozzies away. And uh, it's very handy to have. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's why some religious people have incense, because it keeps fleas away. Uh, but let's go to Job chapter 30. And listen to this. Okay, it, it, as I say, it doesn't sound very Christmassy, um, but... It's an astonishing piece, and I want to show you why Christmas is the answer uh, to all of that. And I was just about to start reading Job, and I realized I was in Proverbs, which is even less Christmassy. Uh, by the way, can I just say that I will put up uh, today uh, a blog which includes Greg Sheridan's latest article in The Australian, which is stunning. I mean stunning. I'll also put a link to a couple of other excellent Christmas articles. So you'll get those uh, on the blog. For those of you who don't subscribe to The Australian, I have his permission to do that. Job chapter 30, verse 12. On my right, the tribe attacks. They lay snare from my feet. They build their siege ramps against me. They break up my road. They succeed in destroying me. No one can help him, they say. They advance as through a gaping breach. Amid the ruins, they come rolling in. Terrors overwhelm me. My dignity is driven away as by the wind. My safety vanishes like a cloud. And now my life ebbs away. Days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones. My gnawing pains never rest. In his great power, God becomes like clothing to me. He binds me like the neck of my garment. He throws me into the mud and I am reduced to dust and ashes. And then he addresses God. And one of the few times in, in this speech, is the only time he addresses God. I cry out to you, God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. With the might of your hand, you attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. I know you will bring me down to death, to the place appointed for all the living. Well, as I said, it, it doesn't appear very Christmassy. And yet, and yet, let me suggest some things. Firstly, Job is talking here about his physical suffering. And we are living under an illusion if we think that people don't suffer physically at Christmas. Of course they do. There is the day and night, it grips him. And although he calls to God, there's no answer except more pain. Now, if you contrast this with chapter 29, verse 14, and chapter 30, verse 18, the clothing of, of right, justice and righteousness are contrasted with the clothing of pain. It's just this, it's just dreadful. Now, those of you who've experienced pain, I, I, we all experience pain to some degree, but I'm thinking of a, a lovely lady, Jean Graham in Dundee, who had pain all the days that I knew her, constant pain. And I'm not wanting to, to compare with that, but I do often reflect at this time of year, 10 years ago I got out of hospital and I remember, even now, the pain of that still sticks with me. And Job has that plus the loneliness. The great men of God have often been alone. 2 Timothy 4, 16 and 17, at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. I think that physical pain and that emotional and spiritual loneliness, it can be absolutely devastating. Uh, you know, lonely this Christmas. There are people, there's some of you maybe even watching this, that's what you feel. You just feel that heart aching loneliness. You're, you sit at the Christmas table and there are empty spaces. That's one of the difficult things about Christmas for some people. And the physical pain as well, yes, that, that is. Um, that verse, verse 15, terrors overwhelm me. 
Forgive me for going back to Psalm 91. You will not be afraid of the terrors of the night. When I was in hospital, I, I experienced the terrors of the night. Occasionally, I still do. Not massively, but, but occasionally I have what I call hospital dreams, which are not dreams about hospital, but the level of internal terror, which is actually quite overwhelming. Um, it comes there, and that verse is so important. Because why? Someone else experienced the terror, the horror, the pain. And that, of course, is the baby that came to die, Christ. He was born in blood. He was born in a massacre, the 2,000 baby boys. He was born persecuted, and he was born to die. But that was for us. He took our pain so that ultimately we don't experience the ultimate pain of hell or the ultimate loneliness of separation from God. And I think that's a wonderful thing to celebrate at Christmas. So, uh, got a new song from the Geddes and Lady Smith Black Mombasso. If uh, YouTube allows me to play it, if not, there'll be something else. But uh, Christmas Eve, I wish you a great Christmas, a happy Christmas. And I pray that whatever your personal circumstances, you know the Christ who takes away the terrors, the Christ who takes away the pain. God bless you and see you. Well, we'll have the Romans Road on Boxing Day. Otherwise, I'll see you on Monday. Bye. is born in Bethlehem.
shall teach us, holy child, by thy 